Swimming on a coral reef, sometimes it's like being in a dream. You're swimming through clouds of fish, thousands of fish, swirling around your head. The reefs themselves have their colors and their diversity of forms. There are many different corals, and they're swaying back and forth with fish swimming around through them. And of course, you're flying through this environment. This is one of those times when you get to stick your arms out and steer yourself like an airplane and fly through this environment like flying over a forest and see this environment teeming with life. It is one of the best feelings in the world. What most people think of as a coral being the large round boulder or the branching tree looking thing on a reef is actually a colony that's made up of millions of tiny animals that look like anemones and they contain within their tissues algae photosynthesizing plants. The plants use sunlight and convert sunlight to food and provide that food to the host animal and the animal in turn gives nutrients to the plants that live inside of its tissues. It's a symbiosis. Both the animal and the plant are deriving a lot from the relationship and providing for the other. Over the course of many centuries, these tiny animals growing together as a colony of thousands of individuals will leave behind their calcium carbonate, that's limestone skeleton, millimeters at a time that will grow to be these huge structures that we see on coral reefs today. Coral reefs are incredibly valuable ecosystems on the planet. The physical coral environment provides the basis for the food chain and the entire ecosystem. They provide the nursery environment for the breeding fish. They provide habitat. And coral reef environments and corals themselves are extremely valuable to people and to society. The physical structures of coral reefs provide protection to the shorelines and to villages from tsunamis and hurricanes. They provide the fish stocks for fishing communities that rely on the reefs for their survival. Indigenous peoples around the world derive their protein from the reefs. But coral reefs are very, very fragile. Human activity is having a large impact on coral reefs in a number of ways. First of all, pollution can cause diseases, and runoff can increase the amount of sediment in the water, which can smother corals. In addition, through climate change and global warming, raised sea surface temperatures cause a bleaching event when corals expel their algae and the corals will starve and they will die. Finally, increased carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is entering the oceans and making the oceans more acidic, which causes a threat to coral reefs in the long term. In addition to being sensitive to the kinds of environmental changes they are recorders of those very same environmental changes. Essentially, the corals are taking the chemistry of the water and putting it directly into their skeletons so that the coral skeleton preserves a record of the environmental changes like temperature and salinity at the time that the coral was growing. To get these records of environmental change out of the corals themselves, we don't want to lift up an entire colony from the bottom of the ocean, but instead we can take a sample from it. We use a hydraulic drill underwater to take a pillar of coral. So the result of all of this work is that we then have a continuous column of coral rock that is a timeline from the modern day with living tissue at the top going back through time to the bottom when the coral was in fact newly born. So the value of getting records like these out of corals is to try and identify patterns of temperature changes in the past. How warm were the warms and how cold were the colds and how quickly did the climate change between these extremes? And what's happening today is different from what the climate has been in the past, and this provides evidence 
that the climate changes we're seeing today are in fact caused by human activities. And we can also get information about coral health from these records. And this knowledge is critical for efforts towards conservation and the management of marine protected areas. So now when I'm floating over the coral reefs, it's thrilling to know that like the pages of a book are these white layers of rock that record the history, the story back through time of the corals themselves. It's not just a story of the corals, but of something much larger, the ocean basin that I'm in, even the story of the earth itself.